Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a continuation of the uh, tropicals here at Fruitopia at the very end of 2022. <clears throat> I'm starting the video from the back where um, the first part was filmed and um, it's an overview of the backyard. So we have the, the Hass avocado here. The neighbors are uh, apple trees they're getting destroyed by parrots <coughs> and the <coughs> jujube jabuticaba guava apricot native australian tamarind the ice cream bean there and um persimmon mulberry pomelo the jamun down there the little baby now that's going to be a big tree though in the years to come so yeah and there we have the the worst avocado so let's go back to the to the front yard now and see um, what's bounced back since um, early December which is um, when it was still feeling like springtime here in Melbourne unbelievable We've only now, at the end of December, felt some decent heat. Okay, so let's do this. Starting off here with the, uh, the jackfruit, which I planted almost a month ago. It's actually grown maybe four inches five inches yeah basically this tip here at the top so looking good enjoying its uh new position here up against the brick wall and getting help of course overhead by these uh huge bananas and these young ones that are coming up now as well these two it's gonna really need all the help we can get from the hot sun especially when it's over 30 35 and 38 and maybe 40 so the old leaves here at the bottom seem to be dying back right So far, so good on the uh, on the new jackfruit seedling. Here we have the the Glen Mango, looking uh, its best with uh, all the new flushes everywhere and uh, uh, fruitlets. Yeah, we have some fruitlets, guys. The first fruitlets have set up here, finally. We're about two weeks behind every other summer, past summers, but we're finally getting some fruits setting at the very, very end of the year. Usually by now, um, We've actually got decent sized uh, little fruitlets, but uh, this year was different. A nasty year. <laughs> the nastiest, the nastiest um, year that I can ever remember. Hopefully, this will be um, a turnaround. So we have uh, a lot more heat in years to come and more dry. Okay. So then we've got the three pineapple guavas one two three down at the very end the Surinam cherry completely covered now with new leaves it's dropped all its um, odd leaves but no fruit because the fruiting season is in early spring when it's cold it doesn't try again a second time in summer unfortunately so that's a real bummer like now it could sustain fruitlets but it only gives one chance and one chance only 
at the end of winter, early spring. And that sucks, right? These are all the fruitlets on the feijoa. There's literally hundreds of them. So we're going to be struggling to keep up with these in um, May. I hope the phone doesn't die again like it did um, with the previous video. It's very hot. Currently 26 Celsius at 11 in the morning. This is the um, West Indies Lime. And that's at 3 meters now. The other two new mangoes, which I planted um, a few weeks ago. Um, two Thai... Um, what are they called again? Gee, I've got a blank mind. Just woke up, guys. Um, King Thai. King Thai mangoes. So they're shooting out new growth here at the, at the tips. Right. And this one too. So I'm doing a bit of an experiment here. With... Um, more mature one and a less mature one and then we have um, the Kensington Pride seedling which I also planted recently and this is uh, taking its time to shoot off but surely gonna explode with growth soon just waiting for more heat, consistent heat. Not only 30 one day and 18 the next day, which is what we've been having here in uh, Melbourne. Very inconsistent. And then we have the, um, the young banana can. This one died here. I had to cut it back, as you can see. And it's got this new side growth, which is um, good to see. Okay, so the phone is so hot in my hands, it's amazing. And it's only 26 degrees. Uh, I removed the tree ring from the Wampi. I'm going to create a, a better circle here with edging, natural edging. Maybe... Um, the roots have been constricted over the years by that tight tree ring, you know, like that one there. And why it hasn't been able to grow high. Well, that's a theory I'm working with. The pomegranates here in the pots seem to be setting a lot of fruit. A lot more than last year, that's for sure. So, I've got to keep the water up to these though. Even though I've got um, new sources, they still dry out. Here I've got the um, the black sapoti seedling at uh, two and a half meters now, and the fruit. This is the largest fruit out of all of them. Still pretty small. That's as big as they're going to get, I think, maybe. But uh, we're going to have to thin it out next year. Thin this guy out. It's just too much fruit. See? So much fruit here. We don't want quantity. We want, we want size. There's at least 20, if not more. But who knows? Maybe they'll still keep growing over summer. And here's the wampy again. Flushing out and uh, flowering. Looks like we're going to get a lot of fruit. The um, red shot with mulberry just finished. We didn't get a chance to eat them all. Too many, guys. Look at that. They dried on a tree. Too many. So one tree is more than enough. I don't know why Lisa bought three of these. <coughs> one tree is enough for a whole family. Good luck um, trying to eat from three trees. You'll need... Um, a whole neighborhood to help you so this one this fed us for two whole months november and december okay so the other um, update here is the 
uh, this persimmon here guys this guy is amazing even though it's um, shaded right now because it's um, the time of the day by this green gauge plum which needs to be trimmed so he's missing out on, on a lot of um actually he's missing out on all morning sun and yet in his second year only it's holding like 30 persimmons i'll have to um remove some of them because surely we can't allow it to have um that much fruit on such a small tree it's crazy look look at that huh i wish the other fruit <laughs> trees would would behave like this guy would take notes huh two years and it's got 30 30 persimmon amazing gosh and the variety on this is the 20th century or um uh shuruga and then we have the uh carob still waiting on the fruit here to ripen i'm not sure when they with when these will be ready but um they're looking pretty good can't wait to bite into these um carob carob fruit the tree itself just keeps growing and growing and growing it's well over two meters now getting close to two and a half meters probably is two and a half meters and finally the um uh, pomegranate the ben Hur, has taken off it's gone over the hedge at um also two and a half maybe three meters after 10 years guys after 10 years it's finally starting to set um, a decent amount of fruit i mean we've had one fruit from it in 10 years one fruit right and this year um it looks like we're gonna get a decent crop but again it's not the numbers it's also the quality like the, the one fruit we got eight years ago, it was um it wasn't that good. I don't think I even ate it, I just I think I threw it out. But um now it's finally paying off. The uh oops that see how that fell? The uh Ben Hur is paying off guys. But definitely not a variety I would recommend. No way. 10 to 12 years. Are you kidding me or what? But very attractive. I think they're very attractive trees. This one here is a much better variety to have. It's the Elsh. And this one is 8 years old. And uh, this sets consistently. I had um, about five, of the, 5 on it last year. But still nothing compared to... Um, my neighbor's wonderful. Check it out. That's the one to go for. That one there. That's the only one I don't have. And the reason I don't have it is because my neighbor's got one. <laughs> There's no point in having two of them, right? And this one gets like a hundred fruit every year. And it's only five years old. Can you believe it? The wonderful pomegranate. Don't forget that one. okay so what else that's the um mexican cream guava setting a lot of um fruit buds coming or flower buds like all the guava the tropical guavas are doing at this time of the year so that's still early days on that but they'll be setting in about a month here we have uh, one of two cherry moyas uh, the white the purple guava here <clears throat> just finished flowering and a lot of fruit guys this has got like 200 purple guavas on it that have been set I don't know how I'm going to eat them all but that'll be interesting um, the, sur the second Suriname cherry the new one I just planted last year has gone off in the back finally Okay, let's move around here. I'm trying to keep out of the sun for the sake of the phone. 
the new plum that I put in the ground a month ago. It's very happy. Actually, the other one too. This one suffered stress during that 38 degree day. But I watered it and it came back. Heat stroke. Okay, here we have another white. Um, uh, cherry moya. Something's eating its leaves here. There's always these leaf munches. The new papaya. One there and one over there. Slowly taken off. That's the red variety from Dailies. Um, I put up some protection for the um, bacon avocado because it really suffered on that 38 degree day we had a few days ago. When I say suffered, basically the leaves just um, wilt, just wilting. There's no burnt leaves at all. Nothing got burnt. So I'm just protecting it from that side over there because that's where the sun is. It comes from over there and goes across. So basically it penetrates there all, all morning till about three in the afternoon. The same with the shepherd. The shepherd gets protection in the morning though from these bananas and cops it all afternoon. And that's, as you can see, that's doubled in height just in the last couple of months, the shepherd avocado. Um, this is the Tongan banana. It's really taken off well. It's nice. A couple of figs. The um, dwarf ducas. It's got new new leaf there. Always good to see. I finally got rid of the last agapantha from here so this is all agapantha free now and I can plant I was thinking of putting the lamb has here the one I have in the pot right in this area there is a, a volunteer um, there is a volunteer avocado here a seedling which I did not plant I don't know what I'm gonna do with that one. Maybe just leave it here under the bananas. <clears throat> so, and maybe this uh, loquat seedling here, which I put five years ago, it's taken its jolly time to get going. But um, something's going on with its um, trunk. I'm not sure if that's a boar. Looks like a boar. He's boring the heck out of it. See that? What do you guys think that is? Something's eating into the loquat seedling trunk. Having a jolly old time in there. The tree itself looks damn healthy. I also had boar problems on the, uh, um, the plums about a month ago. And uh, never had this problem with the plums, both the green gauge and the, I'm, I'm sidetracking now, both the green gauge and the, the Coes, golden, right? I don't know what the heck's going on in here, but these boars are nasty. So they really hit the low quite hard though much more than the plums okay so um, the uh, Hicks fancy I'm gonna have to butcher that it has to be butchered twice a year it just grows huge and we don't get any fruit from it because of the birds we have a nasty bird problem here in Melbourne well at least here with Fruitopia really really nasty well you heard the parrots next door going for my neighbors apples um, the white sapotis have fully come back from the spray and the uh, <clears throat> removal of uh, leaves, the scale, remember that, a couple of weeks ago. So these are tough. They'll come back 
no matter what you do to them. And we have some fruit that's almost ready. But look, look at the growth. Huh? So don't be afraid to butcher the heck out of uh, white sapote. The vernon wasn't affected so much, as you can see. I didn't take much off. But this is the vista. The vista was badly affected. See the difference? With one sapote tree and the other one over there. And also the, um, the one over here, the, this one wasn't affected much either. But I sprayed them, fully sprayed them. Look, looks fine. This is the um, Wilson. Jeez, keep forgetting its name. Yeah, so we're in the middle of the tree now. In the Wilson. And uh, it's fine. Okay. The uh, apricots here are going off. I put a net on it yesterday. Otherwise, we'll get no apricots. There's like 200 apricots in here. Right? These, the first ones will be ready in a couple of days, like the first week of uh, January. Again, we're two weeks behind uh, other past um, summers. I butchered the white chatut uh, mulberry tree. Look at that. I hacked it right down to the base with a chainsaw last week. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, man. What a terrorist. This guy's a terrorist. Be careful of the white chatut mulberry. I was thinking of completely removing it, like even cut at the bottom and planting a tree on either side, like one there and one here and getting two trees, two smaller trees in and removing this monster from the middle. But I feel bad, guys. I feel bad for him. I might give him one more chance. He didn't fruit at all for the last uh, 12 months. Uh, this is the uh, Bowen seedling mango tree. Uh, again, taking this jolly time to get going because of the unstable uh, weather, right? It's doing its best. Look what happened here on the 38 degree we had. Look at this. See that? It got fried. One day, just one hot, really hot day. Huh? Yeah. So, if it's not the cold, it's the heat. If it's not the heat, it's the wind. And if it's not the wind, it's the, um, the animals, or the scale, or the anthracnose. You name it. The garden keeps you busy. This is the uh, lemon gold, which I also hacked. And you can see the, the new growth coming like insane isn't it look look at that new growth everywhere so again don't be, don't be afraid of hacking the uh the white sapote it's a it's a animal it's a wild animal look at that and of course the the one that started all the problems the hawaiian supreme is also coming back. I gotta get into the shade again. Whew, it's hot. My my hand is burning hot from the sun. So check it out. Right? It's coming back in full force. Then my shoes squeaking. My uh, crocs. See that? Look. So the bare skeleton um, will be filled in by the end of summer. This will be f completely full of growth by March. So Indian guava is almost fully uh, re-leafed with new, gr new leaves, right? And uh, ready to wake up the um, um, what do you call them the fruit buds ready to flower 
they're hard to see because they're all green. The Custard Apple, the Paxton Prolific, is doing exactly what I want. Finally, it's going up instead of growing sideways in a circle, which I don't want. Um, and it's got hundreds of uh, <coughs> flower buds coming all over. They're really small, they're tiny. Right? Yeah. Really, really small. I can smell them from here. You can smell the... Um, the buds. And finally, guys, the first um, Grumi Chama will be ready by uh, next week. The first week of 2023. Brazilian cherry. This is loaded. The best year ever for the Gurumi Chama. Like probably 300 fruit. I got a net it though. There you go. Maybe that's the first one there. See that? They hide very well. It's like nature designed it to hide from the birds. But once the birds get onto it, but don't leave it alone. They're, they're nasty, nasty. Okay, and then the uh, lemon guava here, uh, yellow cherry guava, that's also finished flowering, setting fruit now, fruitlets, right? It's taking its jolly time. This is about two weeks behind also. And then we've got stacks and stacks of uh, passion fruit coming for the new year literally um, uh, over a hundred it's going to be interesting to keep up with the passion fruits and that's it guys that's been the big um, turnaround thanks to the um, heat the heat we've been waiting for for three months we've lost three months of growth so when you see people's gardens in brisbane gold coast sydney and then you look at my garden, it's like, what the hell's going on, George? What's wrong with your garden? There's nothing wrong, guys. It's just that we missed out on September. We missed out on October. We missed out on November. And we missed out on most of December. Heat. We missed out on heat. No heat. So what do you expect to see in my garden with only one week of heat? That's all we've had. Seven days. Of hot weather for um, spring and um, summer seven days so it's good that I've even even can show you what I showed you right that would that's a miracle that I have anything to show so as I said at the beginning of the video I hope that um, this will be the turnaround and we go from La Nina to El Nino right hot 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 and dry 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 which means a lot more work for me I gotta start watering again I've only watered this garden once this year once this um, season usually by now I, I'm watering three times a week starting in November yeah so that's the video thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something from it one um, comment I got yesterday was from someone that said hi I'm uh, originally from Gippsland Victoria and I moved to Queensland because I didn't think that um, tropical trees would grow in Victoria <laughs> it's a bit late now you should have caught my channel before you made the move of course you can grow tropicals here but there's caveats and the caveat is you need to be patient patience is the key so instead of um, three to five years wait on uh, results here it's five to eight years wait yeah you got to take that into consideration if you're patient you too will have the same results that they have in Queensland let's pick our number eight. there you go look at that Mmm. Look at the size of this pomelo. 
So the results are here. It's just that they take time. They're not overnight like they are in Gympie or Bundaberg. All right, guys. Catch us from the next video. If you like the channel, please subscribe. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.